We definitely um, are asking for people to come out and donate as much as they can for her. She's scheduled to get blood transfusions every four weeks. And the last month was the longest she's ever went without a blood transfusion. It took almost six weeks before we found her some blood. So we're just hoping and praying that people will come out. They'll see, you know, her condition and that she has needs and that we need people to come together as a village, as a community, and not only help Janaya, but help other people who need blood as well. She was diagnosed with sickle cell at birth, and I was devastated because I didn't even know that me and her dad both had the trait until we gave birth to her. So they told me that she had SS, which is, I guess, one of the most severe uh, ones of it, and they said that she could potentially... Um, you know, have health issues as she gets older. Um, the great thing is majority of her life, I really didn't have a lot of complications. She was a normal child. She was able to play outside. You see the light? Good. She was able to be a normal child, play with her friends. Um, She's been going to St. Jude since birth. They've been taking care of her since birth. So we'll do our monthly couple month checkups, make sure she's good. Um, about January 2019, St. Jude randomly called me and said, hey, we need Janaya to come in ASAP for a blood transfusion. Her hemoglobin is low. And I was like, well, Janaya seems fine. She doesn't seem like anything's going on. I was like, well, let's just be on the safe side and do the blood transfusion. She's never had a blood transfusion ever in her life up until that day. So I checked her out early. We did the blood transfusion. And maybe a week or so later she started having severe pain crisis out of nowhere. And so it was to the point where we were back and forth to the hospital. Um, so then they ended up putting her on all type of medications. A lot of them I was not familiar with. Um, and one of the medications ended up causing her to have severe headaches. So at that point, we're trying to tackle the pain crisis. And now she's having really bad headaches. So we're back and forth to the hospital, back and forth, back and forth. They couldn't get the, um, I guess, the headaches down with like, all the medications they tried, told me to try. It wasn't working. Um, so she would stay in the hospital for days at a time until they finally got it under control. And maybe a week after her getting out of the hospital, she unexpectedly had a stroke. Um, that day that she had her stroke, it was kind of crazy because um, she woke up not feeling well that day. And... I had to go to work. Of course, I'm a working mom. Got to pay bills. So um, I told her, let's just get some rest today. I took her to her grandma's house so I can go to work. Grandma said she slept that whole day. When dad picked her up, he said she pretty much slept the whole day. Um, when he went upstairs to check on her, he saw that she was staring at the ceiling and she wasn't being responsive. So he called me. I was still at work. He was like, Janiyah's not responding to me. She's staring at the ceiling. I'm like, what you mean? Like, what's going on? So I said, take her to the hospital, you know, ASAP, and I'm going to meet you there. Don't wait on me to get off. Just go ahead and take her. So then uh, we found out she had a couple seizures. And then that's when we found out the next day that either it was later on that night or the next day we found out that she actually had a stroke. Um, crazy thing is they said that she's actually had multiple strokes up until that day. And we never even knew about it. Um, so it affected her vision. She's uh, in a wheelchair now. And she's just not how she used to be, you know. And it has affected us. Because, um, we, you know, we were used to her being a normal child, you know, being able to go as she pleased. She was very independent. But um We've been staying strong, you know, she's staying strong. She's still that happy kid that she always been. And we just, you know, we just appreciative for the people who do give blood and allow her to be able to get her transfusions every couple months. So we're just hoping that, you know, they finally get to see Janiyah and see that we need that blood so she can get her transfusions until we can figure out another route to help her get better. So sorry I got emotional. <laughs> I don't really talk about it much, but it has affected us. But we're still trying to stay strong and keep going because she's being strong. 
So we are just asking for a lot of people, new people, young people, anyone that's available to give blood. You're not only helping my daughter, Janaya, but you can help someone else as well. Um, it's good to know your family history, your family background. It's good to know who else in your family not only has sickle cell disease, but have any other disease that could affect your future family members. Um, and it's just good to know, like, your background, where you come from. So we just, you know, we're hoping and asking that, you know, a lot of people can actually come donate. Um, there's a lot of people in need for blood, especially Naya. Um, so we just asking for more people to come out and support. You want to say please help donate blood or? To me? Mm-hmm. You want to say anything? What about to you? Donate Yes. Because you need it, right? Okay. 